Hi guys, welcome back. This is Sam for SAP Careers and Job Seekers Group. Today we're going to talk about controlling area. So the last video, uh, I kind of skipped two weeks. So I was busy with some uh, company and family issues. So I had to attend to those, but let's continue the journey now. So let's talk about how we will configure controlling or the cost controlling area. So last, last video I talked about financials uh, which is the FI area and I talked about the gap in IFRS and today we are going to talk about the controlling side. So the controlling area is a fairly large area unlike FI which has gap and IFRS so it is regulated and it creates financial statements which is balance sheet and income statement or in some countries we call it profit and loss statement. So those are created through the financials which is the chart of accounts and in chart of account you bucket your groups uh, which is income expense asset liabilities uh, retained earnings and others right and those are numbered and those form what we call as the financial statements under gap or the ifrs so fundamental difference between gap you can depreciate whereas ifrs looks at fair market value right so uh, again so the valuation method of both GAAP and IFRS, I, I, IFRS are pretty different. So today we are going to talk about the controlling area uh, or the cost controlling side. Cost controlling side has a much vaster uh, diversion in SAP world or in the enterprise resource planning world because costing is in turn to the company. The government or the organization, the federal government or a state government or a local city county government does not dictate how you control your expenses just like when you earn income you look at your salary but how you spend your salary is not dictated or controlled by any organization or any individual or any uh, entity in the world so you have to control your own cost or expenses now there is a saying that if you control your cost right you will be more competitive in the market and your products or your EBITDA, which is interest, uh, income before in interest, tax and depreciation and amortization. So that will be higher. So you have to control your expense and expense makes you extremely, extremely competitive. So process automation, process engineering, uh, process optimization are all methods to control cost and also, once you have controlled cost, you become cost competitive in the market. Then you go out and improve your revenue side, which is sales and distribution and CRM side of things. So that we will touch upon uh, in another topic, uh, in another video. But today we're going to talk about cost controlling. Right. So cost controlling has cost objects. So what is the cost object? A cost object is a cost collector. A cost center is a typical cost object which collects cost. There are also cost elements. There is primary cost element, there is secondary cost element, and then there is internal order. So internal order is a generic order, which is a cost collector, and it can distribute the cost to each of any of these cost objects. It can distribute the cost to another internal order, or it can distribute to another primary cost element, or it can do to a cost center, another cost object, the profit center, right? Now internal order has versions so internal order is generic, uh, a product or a product cost order or a production order is for PP module, production planning module. A service management or a service order is for customer care services, CCS or CSS or plan maintenance area or enterprise asset management area. A work breakdown structure or a work order is for the project system area. So you have internal order you have service order you have production order and you have work order for the project system area so all these are variants so there are three different variants of internal order which go into each uh, it's like a document which goes to collect costs into that particular business process today i'll give you a quick preview on steps to configure controlling area and go up to the internal order now, once you have done internal order, you will have to do production order. You will have to do customer service work orders, which is for customer service orders, 
So if you're going to repair an internal plant or you're going to repair a washing machine or a uh, HVAC or an air conditioning system in a client side, then you need a service order. If you're going to install something like a network, then you need a work order, which is called project system, PS. And PS works in WBS, which is work breakdown structure, which is a hierarchy, just like a company hierarchy. So you have activities, tasks, and you know, the work breakdown structure, activities, and tasks. So today we'll uh, look at quick preview of what are the steps required to configure costing. Now, how granular can you get into the costing? There is no limit. So we have activity-based costing, which is costing by the type of activity you do. So for example, if you are a company and you are sharing the cost of training, then you will accumulate that cost in an internal order and then distribute it to each of the department. So now you can do a portion costing, which is called percentage or equivalence, or you could do actual costing. The actual costing is done by unit of measure. Unit of measure is if you're lifting a box or you are giving a book, then it'll be per book or per hour. So per hour is the minimum uh, method we do cost capturing, but you can also do by unit of measure. Unit of measure is uh, if you're lifting boxes, it'll be per box or, or in North America, we use per hour costing and it gets into the activity type. So warehouse worker will have warehouse activity. If you are in a corporate environment, you will have activity based costing based on the type of activity. For example, if you are using phone calls and all departments, which is human resource, sales and distribution, accounting, and sales are using phone calls, then you might want to do activity based costing because that is more accurate because it's, it will be based on unit of measure. In this case, it could be seconds or minutes. So how many seconds or how many, how many minutes has sales and distribution used it? How many seconds or minutes uh, accounting has used it, human resource or material management has used how much of minutes or seconds they have used. So you capture the actual second and cost just like the telecom companies and you distribute by that unit of measure. So unit of measure is the smallest component by which you can capture cost and it comes under activity based costing. There's also cost center accounting. There's also profit center accounting. There's also asset accounting and in order to analyze different companies, uh, even at different clients that you might have, uh, you can do within one client or you can do multiple clients. The multiple clients will be done in the business warehouse or business intelligence area. And I'll kind of run through that configuration as well because uh, I've done certification in the business warehouse side uh, many years back, but it's still the same technology uh, in terms of concept. And we will also look at you know, the different cost aspects, uh, which allow you to capture that cost within the client and that is through COPA or what we call as profitability analysis. So let's quickly run through the configuration steps, what is required for configuring controlling area right up to the end of order, right? So the first step, we are going to set up controlling area. So you will set up controlling area and then you'll set controlling area through your transaction OKKC, right? Uh, in setting up the controlling area, you will create the controlling area, which is same as the company code. Controlling area equal to company code. You will give the currency. Uh, you will give the fiscal year variant, which is in this is K4 right? And you will also give standard hierarchy. So here you will only name the standard hierarchy. It is standard hierarchy is the structure by which we do cost centers, uh, just like a tree structure. So you will have a corporate cost center and under that you can have warehouse, you can have production planning, you can have sales and distribution, right? So sales cost can be captured and you can have HR as a cost center. So those costs roll up into uh, the controlling area. So, and that comes under standard hierarchy. So once you do that, number two, you will activate components. So what are the components? Uh, I will activate internal order. Uh, I will activate 
हॉस सेंटर्स एंड आई एक्टिवेट प्रॉफिट सेंटर्स so those are the standards which we activate you could activate other areas like you know copa or active days costing and other uh, options are there inside the system but these internal order cost center and profit center are the fundamentals one will activate the next you will create your standard hierarchy uh the standard hierarchy will be your main cost controlling area under that let's kind of look at this two cost centers so one is warehouse and one is production right uh you can have multiple ones so for example you can also have sales uh right you can also have hr so on and so forth and then this production can have further cost centers under it so you there's no limit to what is the level of hierarchy you can create but this hierarchy is created so that you roll up the cost onto those cost centers now once you have created the standard hierarchy the next one you will take a general ledger account from your uh, chart of account coa chart of account and then you convert it into a primary cost element all right so this is this is cost center hierarchy and that's the minimum you need i can also have profit center hierarchy so profit center uh would be again uh you can have profit center hierarchy you can have different department under it you can have sales uh sometimes you will have service depending on if you're also doing service those are the standard profit centers and then you can assign the production planning department and uh warehouse department to your sales uh profit center hierarchy uh to you can assign the cost centers to those profit centers right so depending on how you are going to do your cost based cost based profitability under uh, the profit centers so once you have done uh, the primary cost element so primary cost element is nothing but the general ledger account it should not have uh, money entered into it before because we want a new one so we start capturing cost because it's it will be unique to the controlling side it is only going to capture cost so once you have done this we will also create something called a secondary cost element what is the secondary cost element so secondary cost element we can call it cost distributor uh you can name it anything right but it's it's like uh if you are distributing costs between a uh, husband and wife it will be your, your your servant who transfers money between you and her because this is uh not an external order it's internal to the company that's why it's it's called internal order so you can capture the cost in internal order or but the distribution of money happens through the secondary cost element and that's used to distribute money between cost objects so we will have primary cost element and we have secondary cost element right and the secondary cost element is used to transfer money between cost objects so your cost objects will be internal order uh cost center account cost centers and profit centers so those would be your fundamentally and you will also have your cost elements as in as cost objects primary cost elements as your cost objects right so the secondary cost element is do, used to do settlement or uh, reallocation of cost between cost objects so once you have done then we'll start the internal order configuration so you obviously have to define number range for all the document types right once you have you have so again you have create controlling area you have activated components you have done standard hierarchy you have done primary cost element 
uh, and we can also create a primary cost segment group. Next, you will define a number range. And then once you have done number range, we'll start looking at internal order. So internal order configuration, I'm just going to give you high levels, four steps. So order type, so the order type, uh, so let's say training, TRN, uh, then you will uh, again create what we call as a, a settlement profile under this. Then you will create allocation structure. And then finally you will create a, a primary cost element or a group or primary cost element group. And you will reverse it. That means you'll assign primary cost element or a primary cost element group to allocation structure, allocation structure to settlement profile and settlement profile to other type. And you can give it also a number like 10. And once you have done this, your entire configuration up to internal order is completed. You will then run a transaction. You can also run a standard transaction like a FD60 or, or FD50, I would say. FD50 or FD60, uh, which is like a purchase invoice or uh, FD70 sales invoice. You can run any of these and then you can uh, have assignment of a default internal order. So when you assign a default internal order, then it will capture that cost in that internal order. So every time you do a transaction, sales purchase or a gen general voucher in case, let's say you're doing corporate training in FD50, you will capture that into that internal order. And then you will do a settlement profile. The settlement profile is done uh, is is used to settle uh, the amount bef between different cost objects. So I told you the cost objects would be internal order, cost center, profit center, and the primary cost element. So once you have done this, you run the internal order, you capture the internal order. Let's say you have you have done a training and you have captured ten thousand uh, dollars the cost, and you want to distribute into these four cost centers or you want to distribute some of them to different cost objects, even to profit centers. And you could do it by equivalence, which is 25% each, or 25, 25, 30, and then 20. Uh, this is called equivalence settlement. Or you can do it by actuals. And actuals you can also do through ABC, activity-based costing. So, Activity-based costing, COPA, asset accounting, right? And product costing, uh, as well as costing for service center or a service management area or plan maintenance and project system costing that different area, right? So that completes the configuration for internal order, right? I hope you understood all the steps. They are pretty simple and straightforward. And I hope you like the content of this video. These are, these are quick preview. It's not detailed and I could do this in system. It will not take more than a couple of hours to do the entire configuration or maybe an hour at the most. Uh, most of the time, we spend a lot of time to gather the requirements from the business. The configuration itself doesn't take too much time and then testing and UAT and the training. And then again, fine tuning, this might take a, a much longer time. So hope you like the content of this video. If you do like, please subscribe this channel and I'm gonna see you in my next video but do uh, give it a thumbs up and like, uh, put, press the subscribe button so we can intimate you when we launch more videos such as this one. So this is Sam Mall, and I'm, look, I'm looking forward to see you again in the next video. Thank you for your time. And this is Sam Mall signing off. Thank you guys.